Do you remember going to the grocery store in 2020 during the height of the pandemic and you're shopping down an aisle, let's say we're going down the cereal aisle. You have those stickers on the floor now, one way direction, you're social distancing, you're wearing your mask and you're about to pull down like your child's favorite cereal and you hear somebody like hacking coughing or you hack and cough and legit everybody on that aisle and maybe two aisles over is like staring in the direction of where that cough came from because in the beginning of COVID, everybody was so scared to catch it. And everybody literally thought you had the cooties if you coughed or sniffled or sneezed. And so, <laughs> you know, I have really bad allergies. So this has happened to me. And then I'm sitting there, I feel like I have having to explain myself and be like, for Pete's sakes, it's just allergies. I have asthma, you know, so that people won't run the other way and go get COVID tested, you know, thinking, oh my God, I was in the grocery store in the same aisle where it was less than six feet and da -da 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 -da, and she was coughing. She had a mask, but I don't know. I'm well, just it's saying funny because it it's like, I can see the people spraying you with Lysol, you know. My husband tried to do it. So I why wouldn't some stranger in the grocery store? I wasn't going to name any names. I know, I know. But that's how crazy the beginning of this whole COVID pandemic started. It really is. <laughs> Welcome back to the Nursing Post podcast, all nursing all the time with Ashley and Rosa. In today's episode, we're talking about COVID shame. So our goal is always to inform and spark conversation. We always like to start off our episodes with a little bit of statistics, get some science in there. In March of 2022, the um, World Health Organization, that people know that also as WHO, uh, had some numbers that they released. And the number of new COVID-19 cases and deaths um, are continuing to actually decline daily. Uh, at that time, was about 5 to 8% compared to the last week. By the time this airs, that could be very different because it can change at a moment's notice. And across the six WHO regions, over 10 million new cases and over 52,000 new deaths were reported. And as of March 6, 2022, over 433 million confirmed cases and over 5.9 million deaths have been reported globally a pretty big number. Um, I'm curious to see how this, um, once things settle down and we develop a sense of new norm, because I don't think we're there yet, mm -hmm. where this will all land and when they start, start kind of saying, okay, we're out of that pandemic mode. We're now, you know, more epidemic or this is what it is. Yes, um, I know currently in the news, there are a couple of different variants that have hit um, mm -hmm. overseas a lot harder than the United States. And so this is going to be ongoing collective data, you know, but I am hoping like we get to the point that we have some type of factual statistical study on the original version of the virus. I think nice. that's the best that we can hope for in this moment. I would I would agree with that. I do think it's going to be an important thing in healthcare to really pinpoint and help people with what we, Rose and I, really could see as COVID shame. It's something that I know that I see a lot of, Rosa, I'm sure that you've seen a lot of it as well, where Absolutely. patients come in and they automatically feel an obligation if they had COVID, explaining how they caught it, or if they don't have COVID, or if they've never had COVID, explaining how they've done all these things right, or even <laughs> to the other stretch, people who have not done anything right and still have not caught it, you know, per them. And of course, there's so much information out there with COVID that we don't know that you didn't catch it because there were asymptomatic cases. You may have caught it and didn't know it. You weren't tested because you didn't have symptoms. 
you know, so it gets into all these fun details of waxing and waning. And I think that we lose sight of the picture of the patient over COVID shame and COVID guilt that it's, it's very frustrating from a nursing aspect for myself. And I did a little bit of kind of like basic, what is the difference between guilt and shame? Because I think a lot of people get them confused and they interchange them and it's not really something to be interchanged. They're similar, but they're different. They are similar. Sometimes they go hand in hand, but they are not the same thing. So I agree. Exactly. And so, of course, where did I go? But to the good old Merriam-Webster dictionary for some definitions. Um, <laughs> guilt is a feeling of deserving blame for offenses. You feel guilt when you feel, when you as a person feel that you deserve what happened. Yeah, like you should be punished for an action that occurred. Right. Shame is a condition where you feel humiliated or disgraced for any particular reason, even if you did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's why we really talk more about COVID shame, because a patient doesn't have to do anything wrong, can still catch COVID, and then they're like, oh, I feel so guilty. No, you're feeling shame because you're feeling like, oh, I, I know I didn't do anything wrong, but I still feel nasty. I feel still feel dirty. Or I still feel like I shouldn't, you know. Like embarrassed. Like right. embarrassed. So it, this could, ha and it's, this has happened. Yeah. At this point, they have four sets of vac vaccinations and boosters, right? You could have had all four and then this new strain come and you can still catch it. And yes. you could have still been wearing a mask and hand washing this whole entire time. And those people that have been vaccinated and really were doing their best to, you know, keep from catching COVID ended up did getting it. And so they are feeling shamed and embarrassed because now they're having to explain, you know, they didn't have any risky behavior, so to speak, and they still right. got and ill. they still caught it. And that's where I get frustrated because I feel like we shouldn't have to do that and patients shouldn't feel that way. Because of when they come in like, oh, I, I did everything I could. I, I wear my mask. I do this. I do that. And I'm like, and I will tell patients straight up, like, look, just because you caught COVID doesn't mean you did anything wrong. And it doesn't bother me. If somebody comes in and has the flu, I don't say, well, how in the world did you catch that? Why didn't you get your vaccination? Blase this, blase that, you know? It's the same concept. At, at that point, it becomes, in my opinion, maybe an area for teaching, but I'm not trying to guilt or shame anybody into anything. Well, I, I don't think we should be playing like the blame game. Um, you know, I felt like with um, COVID tracking, like I understood the value and importance of it, but I also felt as if it led to the blame game. Yeah. Because now it's like, we need to get down to the six degrees of separation of how you caught it. So right. I need to know where you were Friday night at midnight, what you were wearing, who you were with, and why you were there. You know what I mean? It was like, it's like an interrogation. Did you get your COVID um, vaccines? Did you get your first one? Yes. Did you get your second one? Okay. Did you get your booster? Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, you're going in and you're going in. Did you, were you wearing your mask? Were you in a group of a lot of people? And it just goes on and on and on. Until it's like we're trying to find the blame. Like, did you not wash your hands? Did you not hand sanitize? And and it shouldn't be that way. That's not that's not great patient care. And it's quite insensitive. It's very insensitive. Because like you said, you could have done everything absolutely right and still caught it. Did not have any symptoms. So you didn't know you shouldn't have been out in public. You didn't know that you shouldn't have been, you know, around your family because you had no symptoms. So you had no idea. And I'm telling you, in the beginning of this thing, not all, you know, testing was hard, period. It was hard. Oh, you couldn't absolutely. get tested, period. You just couldn't get tested. It didn't happen, you know. Um, I'm also a firm believer that, you know, once you start mixing science with politics, you know, 
the crap hits, hits the fan. The crap just hits the fan. And I have this notion that everything in medicine is kind of political or has political connotations to it. Oh, I'm sure so, it does. That six degrees of separation isn't just for COVID. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And I also feel like the politics at that time played a big part, like a really huge part into the blame game of who got COVID, when did they get it, and who else did they give it to? Yeah, and I, I think it's still, and, and my point more so now, it's instead of the blame game on COVID, it's switched over to, to vaccinations. And I'm a believer in vaccines. That's my personal stance. We both are. We're vaxxers. Yeah. And, but I think when we get to a, a position where we really start judging other people on their vaccine status and nurses, I've read nurses say things on social media that, oh, if they weren't vaccinated, then they shouldn't get care. Like, are you kidding me? Like, then you shouldn't be a nurse. If you feel that whole field of medicine is about helping other people. Mm -hmm. And just like doctors have a Hippocratic oath, so do nurses. And you know, that first thing is to do no harm and then to do the best to your ability with your knowledge and expertise mm -hmm. to help somebody in yep. need. So to me, you know, if that's your attitude, you need to find another career because this is not the career for you. Yeah, and that's exactly how I feel. And some people say, oh, well, you don't understand. I didn't work in a hospital setting. No, I didn't. But I do understand basic health care and basic patient care. And if you feel that way about COVID, then why don't you feel that way about diabetes? Oh, you're overweight and have type 2 diabetes, then you really shouldn't get care until you lose that person that you're attached to your hip. What's the difference? It, there isn't a difference. You know, you want to deny a person care based on a decision that they've made. You know, we make a decision most of the time to eat the things that we know are not very good for us that we know causes weight gain. You know, there's a difference in eating, you know, a little Debbie and an apple nutritionally. Well, and I remember in the beginning of this, and I know we've talked about it in previous podcasts where people were like, I'm not going to get that vaccine because I don't know what's in it. But yet, then again, they were the ones like in drive through ordering like the greasiest, most preservative, like hip hugging, life sucking meal with their Diet Coke and talking yeah. and literally slurping as I'm having this conversation with them. And yep. they're like, I don't know what's in that vaccine. And I'm like, dude, you don't even know what the heck was in that burger. No, that is so funny because I had a patient say that they weren't getting vaccinated because they didn't know what was in it. And I looked at them and I'm like, look. You are in your right mind. You can make any decision you want to. But I didn't know what was in that bag of Doritos I ate last night. Just saying. And I had to eat, not the entire bag, but a good healthy portion of Doritos the night before. I hear you, sister. And so I was, and he like looked at me and I was just like, you know, could it end up being something in it that can cause a problem in 10 years that we didn't know was going to happen? Absolutely. fucking And I agree. But. Period. I feel like. I feel if you're going to try to hold yourself to a higher standard or think you're holding yourself by, to a higher standard by saying you don't know what's in it and so you're not going to do it, then you have to follow that in all aspects of your life. Um, not just... Or you should. Yeah. Yes. Not just that one, I'm not getting the vaccine, but I'm going to go ahead and hit every fast food restaurant and burger joint in town and order a Diet Coke to make myself feel better. You know, I feel like you're targeting me there, Rosa. <laughs> no, just the fact that you don't use creamer in your coffee. Hey, look, I decided I wanted to eat my my calories and I drink them. And I hear you, sister. I hear you. <laughs> so we've kind of talked about that shame that patients would have, like, coming in and mm -hmm. being seen and being treated and the shame that they felt. But even before, you know, the pandemic, we as nurses have kind of felt shame for maybe being ill and having to call out and then in the process of calling out and missing time from work felt guilty because 
they made us feel as if we were letting everybody down. So earlier when I said, you know, sometimes they go hand in hand, but they don't mean the same thing. This is kind of like what I'm talking about. Um, Before the pandemic, you know, we've always been short staffed. Obviously, it's been an issue. It's something that we've been talking about for ages. I mean, our jobs were create our LPN jobs were created because of the fact that they cannot turn over enough RNs yep. um, to help the shortage. So right. LPNs were invented for a reason. We've always been short staffed. So at this point in, in today's day or time, whether you're working at an office, a SNF, an LTC, the hospital, it doesn't matter right now what field of nursing you're working in. You're short. You're short, short, short staffed, period. And I know I have personally felt guilty for calling out of work because I know my patients needed me because we were already shorthanded yep. before I even picked up the phone to call out. But in the medical field, you know, everything changed with this pandemic because, you know, the guidelines were st- so strict in the beginning that if you had a sniffle, a sore throat, or anything that resembled a sign or symptom of COVID, you were not to come to work until you had negative COVID tests, which left a lot of people in the beginning of this thing even more shorthanded than than they were when they went in. Oh, absolutely. And then they were like, oh, we can't let the sick nurses be sick. Let's just not test them. Let's just, just not test them. And it's just crazy because still to this day, you know, we have and are still getting the short end of the stick. For sure. I didn't get hazard pay for working through the pandemic. Me did neither. you? No. Okay. Negative. Um, but a lot of people did. I just unfortunately wasn't one of them. I got during the working during the pandemic. Let me take that back. At the end of the year, because I worked at full-time hours, anybody who worked full-time hours got $1,000 at the end of the year. So for your entire year, like if you didn't work more than like so many hours, it was all based off of your hours that you worked. Mm -hmm. And then it went down after that. It was like four different tiers for like, if you did anything, you got... 250. If you did a little bit more, you got 500. The people that were almost full time were 750 and then like $1,000. So we did get that like one time bonus kind of thing, but no hazard pay. And it was pretty much presented to me as you should be thankful that you have a job during this pandemic. I think, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's how there were a lot of people who didn't work during the pandemic that made more money than I did ever. Mm -mm, Don't get me started. Okay. The reason why you probably got that quote unquote bonus was because your place of employment reached out and filed for assistance and realized that the law said if their employees didn't get a portion of that assistance back, then they were going to be penalized and fined. So I would like to say it came from the kindness of their ever loving hearts, but me being the nurse that I am working as many years as I have just kind of feels like that is not this case. Yeah, I I absolutely know it, it, that it wasn't the case. And so it's funny because I made a comment like that and I'm like, well, when you have COVID funds, that's what I call it, COVID funds, when you have COVID funds that have to be allotted towards like pretty much employee paychecks, mm-hmm. you kind of have to put it towards employee paychecks or, or give it back to the government. And they don't want to give it back to the government because it's free money, you know, and it's not free. It's coming from somewhere. Trust me, but mm-hmm. uh, probably back on the back end of my paycheck. Nonetheless, I'm just like. It's amazing because I feel like nurses are getting the crappy end of the stick. The majority of nurses are getting the crappy end of the stick, especially during the pandemic. I think it's just kind of escalated all the all the shit. And then we take that and we're frustrated. And I think that some nurses don't pause at the door to say, 
it's not the patient's fault. We don't need to say, hey, what are you doing? Why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Like, that's not what we're here for. You're here to treat the patient that's in front of you, get the information that you need to treat that patient and what's going on with them immediately. And then that's all you need. And I think it's important to make sure that, well, it is important to make sure that patients feel comfortable enough to have an open and honest conversation with you. So that way you can give them the best care that you can, because if they're not being honest, they can't get the best care. And that's true. And I agree with that. And I'm a firm believer that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't really take care of anybody else. So I'm going to get on my step box right now. And Your just soapbox. like soapbox. My, I, I always get these things wrong. I'm going to get on my soapbox right now and let all nurses everywhere know that it is okay to use your PTO and your sick time. You know, there's this running meme that PTO means prepare the others. Well, you worked for it, honey. So let the others be prepared for when you do take your PTO and sick time. You have to take care of you because even on your sickest day, you can think you've had the best day and still make a mistake. Yes. And with the way things are going in nursing, the last thing anybody wants to do is make a mistake, especially now. Exactly. Exactly. I don't want to make a mistake ever, but specifically, I'm like right now (laughs) over documenting because I'm like you know just in my feelings about everything nursing profession (laughs) I think we just take everything so personal and that's that's how you know you have a good nurse but you also have to be a, a good enough nurse to know that you need to take care of you too because the all the double time, all the extra shifts that you're volunteering for, that time is coming from somewhere else. And I remember in the beginning when I worked in assisted living where my husband told me, you know, I'm just going to start taking pictures of every event and then I'm going to make you this big collage. And then I was like, oh, how sweet. And then he said, they're going to be of the pictures that you're not in because you were too busy working picking up shifts and volunteering to help that you missed out on all these events. And the light bulb went off for me and I was like, oh shit, he's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to do a lot better and we need to make sure that we're taking time, our PTO time so that we can reset, take a break and come back refreshed. And it's also not our personal responsibility It's the company's responsibility for their shortfalls or failures. It's not your job to staff the unit or the hospital. And it's not your fault that there may be lack of appropriate management. So no, don't feel guilty about it. Yeah, And don't shame others when it's their time to use their time. And I think that's something that old school nurses need to do better with and I will include myself in this I was talking to a nurse the other day that was like I can't believe this person took off a whole day from work just to do xyz and it was something that I wouldn't have taken off I would have went had it done come back if I was in a little bit of pain I would have taken some medicine went on about my day it it would have been easy peasy in my eyes and I was like I was like, yeah, it is, you know, it it left the one person short, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, well, you know, if they, and I I literally stopped in the middle of the conversation. I was like, well, you know, if they have the time, it's their time to use, they should be able to use it. And that person was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So I think we have to, as a people that have historically been like, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep going, keep going, keep going. We need to realize that we also have to check ourselves and say no. Just because we never learned a good work-life balance doesn't mean that we should instill that bad habit on other people. Absolutely. And I also feel that management and employers shouldn't take advantage of it. At the end of the day, your obligation is to you, your family, and your patients. And in these times and in these days, like Ashley said, You know, sometimes you just have to do what's best for you. And if that means declining an unsafe assignment 
or an unrealistic nurse to patient ratio, then it's okay to say no. Yeah, I don't feel safe taking that patient assignment. I mean, a simple mistake or an oversight right now doesn't mean that you're going up against only the board of nursing to just lose your nursing license that you worked so hard to get and paid student loans to get. I mean, now we're talking about even the possibility of, you know, civil suits and prison sentences. We're talking about prison federal pen time. So definitely, definitely, sometimes you just need to do what's best for you. And sometimes that means finding another employer and or maybe finding even another career. Just saying. So if you want any information, um, references from our episode today, you can visit our website, thenursingpostpodcast.com. It has all of our show notes. You can also go to our shop. We have all of our merchandise there. Please subscribe to our podcast if you like it. And you can also share it with anybody that you think would like it as well. Again, thank you for listening to The Nursing Post.